This takes 180 milliamps. That's a strange number. Let's get the board out of this MacBook and try to figure out why it's taking 180 milliamps. If it was taking 20 to 40 milliamps, typically that means PM Sleep S4L is missing, our S4 and S3 rails are incoming on. If it's taking 250 milliamps, there's a short to ground on a main power line like PP Bus G3 Hot, and you gotta find it. But 100 to 180 milliamps is a strange number. That can often mean that an SO rail is not coming on, or ALSIS power good is missing, but ALSIS power good being missing is not common on this 2013 14 H 1502 MacBook Pro. If you take a look at the upper right corner of this board, you'll see that there's a little spot of corrosion. And on the microscope, it becomes very apparent that there is some serious corrosion over here. Let's open up the schematic and board view and try and see what it is that, is that that corrosion would be affecting. So this would be an 820-3476 board. I'm going to open it here on the schematic and the board view and show you them on the screen. Now most of the corrosion that you see here is by U1950. U1950 is a dual logic gate. The way this logic gate works is when you have your two inputs over here and they're present, you get your one output. And then there's going to be another logic gate here where if you get your two inputs, you get your one output. This logic gate is powered by the PP3V42 underscore G3 hot power rail. That's 3.42 volts. This logic gate will result in signal called PM PCH sys power OK and also PMSOP good, which is going to result in PM PCH power OK. If we look at that section of the schematic, you'll see that there is an obvious pattern going on here. This is the power management section of the PCH, which is the platform controller hub, which in this machine is included in the CPU. Now what you'll notice is that there's a bunch of signals on the left that say in, and a bunch of signals on the right that say out. So in order to get the outs, you need the ins. And many of these that you see over here, like PM Sleep S5L, PM Sleep S4L, PM Sleep S3L, are required to turn on many of the power rails. So, what's going to happen is that we are not going to get the machine to turn on. The system power management is not going to work if PMPCH power OK and PMPCH sys power OK are not present. And they're most likely not present because the part of the board that makes them present looks like this. No good. So, what we're going to do is we are going to add some flux. There we go. We've got some flux around the board. And then we're going to use the hot air station to heat up and remove that chip, which is most likely bad or seriously corroded. Now, many people will ask, why is it that we are adding flux and working on the board prior to cleaning it? And that's an excellent question. The reason that we are adding flux to the board and doing work on the board before we clean it is because cleaning the board itself can actually indeed damage it to some extent. So when you have all of this, all of this corrosion and all this junk, a lot of the stuff that's really green, uh, that occurs from the components and their solder joints kind of decaying and corroding away. Now, when that occurs, what I'd like to do is I'd like to use the hot air and, and the flux to re-solder anything that is kind of cold solder joint. I don't want that solder to get swept away while I'm cleaning. Think of it as if you let's say that you just dropped a bunch of your valuables you and let's say you made a mess on the floor you may want to sweep the floor but you want to pick up your valuables first before you sweep all that stuff away into the trash same is true here i want to clean the system but i don't want to clean before i've made sure that the valuable stuff is soldered there the second reason i'm not going to do the cleaning before getting started working on the board is because if i clean then get started working on the board i have no hints this little green stuff is a little map as to what it is that matters on the board. And I don't want to get rid of that map just for the sake of it being clean. We are definitely going to clean this. This is going to go through an ultrasonic cleaning, and it's going to look great after the ultrasonic cleaning process is done. All the flux will be removed from the board. All the contaminants will be removed from the board. But I don't want to do that just yet. So let's get started. We're going to use the hot air station, which, by the way, we have in stock on store.rossmangroup.com now at 220-230 volts, as well as the 110 volt version.
And we're going to remove U1950. Now, as you can probably see, once U1950 has been removed, you'll see that one of the pads is not like the others. And the pad that is the most gross is going to be this pad in the upper left corner. That is for U1950. And that is for, this is where PP3V42 is going to go into the chip. As you can see, I'm breaking my New Year's resolution for the 15 millionth time by using tweezers to scrape the board rather than reaching for an X-Acto knife that's right next to me. I should stop doing that. This is going to be the pad for PP3V42 underscore G3 hot. The reason that the corrosion occurs here is because while all these other pins are signaling pins, which is going to be really low amperage, this is going to be power. So over here you have where PP3V42, the main power line, is going into the chip. That's where the most damage is going to occur, and that pad was totally corroded away. So what we are going to do here is scrape away at the board now with an X-Acto knife. Should have links to all this stuff in the video description down below. And we're going to bring our pad back. So now we have something that looks like a pad back. And now that we've got the pad back, we're going to add a little bit of flux. And we are going to resolder those pads and then place another chip on there. And that should solve our problem with this little Retina MacBook Pro. Okay, so we're just going to take the soldering iron, some s fresh solder. Uh, this is the FM2032 handpiece with the T30-KN tip. Link in the description down below. It's very good for micro soldering. I like it. And there we go. So I did my preliminary scraping. And... Everything there is going to be great. Now there's that resistor under that looks like it could look a little bit better. I don't really want to try and save that resistor even though I probably could. See? It's kind of like filing your nails. It's just a little bit of filing. See that? Now it's all nice and clean again. But that resistor looked a little beat up. Now it doesn't look beat up anymore. Looks like it could be a happy little resistor. Nah, we'll replace it anyway. But see, I could have saved that resistor. It's just... I didn't want to. Kind of get some scraping in the pad under. Get some scraping on the side of the resistor. You got yourself a setup. Okay. So now... I am going to grab myself a replacement resistor, a replacement capacitor, and a replacement chip. And then this board should take the proper amount of amperage, and after that's done it should probably work again. I got the chip there, but I haven't soldered it in place. Because I'm going to remember, I'm going to have to apply heat again to put the resistor and the capacitor there. And I figure that the heat from putting the resistor and the capacitor there will be enough to heat the chip into place. I don't feel like heating it any more than what is necessary. All right, now everything there is kind of moved into place. I'm going to push down on the chip because I wanted to make a really nice connection with the board. No need to have a bunch of excess solder that it's sitting on. And the excess is going to come out the bottom. And then I'm just going to grab that with the knife tip, which is the T30-KN. I'm just going to wait for it to beep up. And once it beeps, beeps, it'll mean that it's heated up. There we go. And beautiful, beautiful. 
There's a little nasty resistor over here. It's just a pull-down resistor to ground. It's no big deal. It's not a critical resistor. Make it look a little nicer here. Just a pull-down resistor for LCD power enable. You could take off that resistor in the machine and still work just fine. No big deal there. Yeah, we'll just take a look about the surrounding area. Change the exposure on the microscope camera. And it looks like this is probably going to be a happy little board. I can't imagine anything else being wrong with this board or it having any sort of CPU problems. Uh, all of our corrosion was on a circuit for 3.42 volts, so it's not like we're dealing with corrosion by the CPU MOSFETs. And the last board I was working on on stream, we had corrosion by the CPU MOSFETs. And what that often does is it sends 8 or 12 volts to the CPU because 8 or 12 volts is going through that chip and that chip connects to the CPU. So when you get corrosion there, you have a chip that's meant for 1 volt, getting 8 volts, that's bad. Here, we have a chip that's, that is, sends 3 volt signals, and its power line is 3.3 volts. So, so it's, not, it's not something where I'm really excessively worried about there being a lot of damage. So I think as soon as we turn this on, plug this in, that we should be able to see a happy little fan spin. And once we have a happy little fan spin, we can return this MacBook to its owner, who will probably be happy that they saved a lot of money off of what they would have spent at the Apple Store. And as you can see there, we've got a happy little fan spin. And, uh, yep, that, that's pretty much all there is to it, folks. So we just, uh, we're on here, and it, PP3v4 2 underscore G3 hot. It goes to pin 8, which is the power pin of this logic gate. And the connection was broken because the pads uh, over here, in, as well as over here, were completely corroded away. And just a little bit of scraping with the iron, a little bit, a little bit of flux, a little bit of solder. That's all this little board needed. And now we can move on to the next MacBook. The next MacBook. The next MacBook.